Welcome to another training video by H Impact. This is Travis L. Holt, Senior Software Engineer here at H Impact. This video will cover how to complete the integration of Entity Framework Core for SQL Data Access for our Blazor server-side project. We'll do this by adding a DB Context class to our Models folder. The data from the SQL database will be used later in this video series to build charts from the Chart.js JavaScript library. We are using Microsoft Visual Studio Community 2019 and Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio 2019 with a SQL Server Express installation. All software is free and is available on Microsoft's website for download. I have included the links in the description below. Also, if you missed the previous Blazor Chart.js video, which created a Blazor server-side project and began the integration of Entity Framework Core for SQL Data Access, I've left the link in the description, as well as the project source code. Let's get started. If you recall from our last video, we created our Blazor server-side project and partially began the integration of Entity Framework Core. Now, let's complete the implementation by adding a DB Context class. Adding a DB Context to our project will allow us to establish a session with our new Chart Stats database. To get started, we will add a class to our Models folder. To add a class, right-click the Models folder and choose Add, then Class. We'll name our class AppDBContext. Nice. Okay, now we have our AppDBContext class created. Now it's time to add a constructor to our class. CTOR, tab twice. Great, okay. Our constructor has been added successfully. Now we need to add an argument of type DB context options to our constructor. Options. Okay, we've added our constructor and also added an options argument of DB context options. In order to make this a true DB context, we must inherit Entity Framework Core's DB context class. To inherit the class, right after the name of the class, we type colon db context. Okay, great. It looks like we have some issues with our namespaces. In order to resolve those issues, we can simply use the light bulb again. Using Microsoft Entity Framework Core is the namespace we need. Okay, great. It looks like it was added to our using statement successfully. I'm gonna move it down here to the bottom, just so we can keep track of the ones we added. Okay, great. It looks like everything is resolved now. Let's continue on with our constructor. We need to pass the same options that we passed into our child class into our base class. In order to do that, at the end of the constructor, we include colon base parentheses options. Great. Now, that completes our constructor for our AppDB context, but the AppDB context needs one more thing 
to make sure we have a reference to our table. We need to add a property named Cities. PROP, tab tab. The data type needs to be a DB set. It needs to include items of type city. And cities will be the name. Again, a DB set property within a DB context is like the table in a database. The items of type city, in our case, are comparable to the rows in a city's table. Going forward, we will be able to query and save data using linked queries. The linked queries will be translated to SQL queries in the database. To make sure our Blazor server-side application gains access to our database when the application starts, we need to add a configuration to the startup class. You may sometimes hear this being referred to as dependency injection, considering at startup, we'll have access to the database from anywhere within the application without instantiating the DB context wherever we need it. For now, let's continue configuring the app DB context in order to establish a connection to our database. So in the startup class, We need to update the configure services method. This is where we'll add a reference to the app DB context class. To do this, we need to use the services collection to add the DB context. Services dot add DB context app DB context. Okay. Looks like the AppDB context has an issue with its namespace. So let's resolve this by using the light bulb again. That's it. Using Blazor chart JS dot models. That did it. Okay. Great. It's looking good. We've added the DB context, but we need to tell our application what database to connect to. Remember the app settings.json file we updated with the connection string? This is the connection string we need to add to our app DB context options within the startup CS class. Okay, back to our startup.cs class. To complete the configuration of the AppDB context and retrieve the proper chart stats connection string, we have to add options, lambda expression, option dot use SQL server configuration dot get connection string and this is where we need to go grab the name of the connection string from the app settings.json file. Here it is right here. Chart stats. Copy it. Back to the startup class. And we paste it right here. And finally end it with the parentheses. Okay. We seem to still have an issue with the useSQL method. So let's see what options are available to us. It looks like we need to choose using Microsoft.Entity Framework Core. Excellent. That did it. We have completely configured the DB context for our chart stats database. And upon startup of this application, we will gain access to the database.
Let's build it and make sure everything is okay. It looks like the application built successfully. As a test, let's just go ahead and make sure the application loads again properly in a browser. And it looks great. The application loaded without issue. We're able to click through the menu items. They still function like they did when we first opened it up. That's all of it. If you have any questions on creating a Blazor server-side project and installing Entity Framework Core, including registering the DB context in the startup class, leave a comment below and I'll do my best on getting back to you. In the next video, we will cover creating a data repository and service to access our SQL data that will be used in our Chart.js charts and throughout our entire Blazor server-side application. In the meanwhile, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Give us the thumbs up with a like and share this video. Comments with or without a question are great too. Again, this is Travis L. Hope. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this training video from himpact.com.